Okay, this last segment that we're going to talk about is going to deal with our latest product called Networks. Networks is a trilogy lock, but we've done something very unique to it. And basically what we've done is we've added a radio to the back of the lock so that we can communicate to it wirelessly using a customer's existing network. So let me walk you through a PowerPoint that helps to understand the product and paint a, a, paint a picture for you in your mind's eye. First of all, uh, each lock has the ability to have 5,000 users. Now that's up from our standard PDL series of 2,000. We can have 500 scheduled events. In an earlier segment, we showed you how to create time zones and schedules. It maintains the last 35,000 transactions, so that's all electronic transactions are recorded in time and date stamped in the lock's memory. And it comes with a five-year battery life using four C-cell batteries which is a departure from what we normally use with our product, which is five AA batteries. We now have three models available um, in distribution. We have the cylindrical, which is called the 6100 series. It's available in the digital and prox. We have a mortise, which is available um, in digital and prox. That's called the 6500 series. We also have the exit trim, and those are called the ETDL for digital, or ETPDL, which is, and then we add the word, the letter N for networks. The next product that's coming out in December is our wireless keypad units. They're called net panels. The net panel will allow you to take uh, and, and handle really any kind of electronic application, whether it be a magnet, an electric strike, an electrified exit device. So when you have those odd openings or you have a narrow style glass door and you want to be able to use a Trilogy Networks product on it, since we're not going to have the wireless in a narrow style configuration, you just simply use a net panel, a strike, and a magnet. The net panel will come as two units as a kit. You'll get the wireless reader and either a, D, a digital lock or prox digital lock. You'll have a separate panel. In the panel will be the radio, will be a terminal strip, and on that terminal strip you'll have door position switch, request to exit, You'll also have a battery backup and plug-in transformer, so all ready to go. The gateways. The key to this product, or how this product works, is we actually take a gateway and plug it into an existing customer's network. Net network can be a LAN or a WAN, a local area network or a wide area network. The three gateways we have is how you connect it to the network, the customer's network. We can do it through an Ethernet connection. We can do it through a wireless connection, meaning that we're going to connect to the customer's network over their 802.11 or a Wi-Fi signal. We also have a third option called Power Over Ethernet. We call it a POEP, meaning that it's getting this low voltage power over the cabling as well as the data. It's also plenum rated, so it can go into plenum space. Quite simply, the gateway communicates to the lock over a 900 megahertz bidirectional radio. So we've got a, basically the gateway is a transmitter. It transmits over a range of approximately 200 feet point to point from its location to the lock. We can have up to 63 locks per gateway and 50 gateways in one system managing 2,000 locks. So if you think of a basic system, up to 2,000 locks, you can have up to 5,000 people in each one of those locks, and we simply take a gateway connected to a customer's network load software on a PC and we're able to communicate. What's interesting about the way that we designed the product is that since the product and all of the intelligence is built on board at the lock, we don't rely on a host, the PC or the gateway, to make the decision whether to grant or deny access. All of that is being made at the lock itself. So what we've done is we've designed the radio so it wakes up every so many seconds so that what we're able to do is we're able to program on demand. Now this gives us a very unique feature. Being able to program on demand means that we can offer what we call an emergency global command that can either lock down an entire system of 2,000 locks in less than 10 seconds, or we have the ability to unlock all 2,000 locks in less than 10 seconds. So we can walk up to the computer through two simple keystrokes, initiate what we call a global unlock or global relock, or better yet, most administrators that's managing the system, they're not managing it from their office. They're going to be in the field. They're going to be on the floor. So we give you the ability to authorize up to 50 people to be able to walk up to any lock in the system, 
present the credential they use every single day, whether it's a card or a code, followed by 911. Very simple number to remember. We all recognize that as the international did, uh, number for an emergency. So we present our card or code, get a green light, followed by 911. And what happens is the locks send a signal back to the gateway. The gateway then sends a signal back to all of the other locks, up to 63 of them connected to that gateway. And the gateways then go across the network, whether it's local or wide, and tell all of the other gateways to lock down or unlock all 2,000 locks. All we have to simply do is make sure that the gateways are set to static IP addresses, and then the, the software will load the IP address of every single gateway into each gateway, and they can find e each other over the net. So let me show you how a basic system is set up. If we take a building, for example, the building that we're in today doing the training, we have a network. From there, we're simply going to plug in DL Windows software into a PC that's connected to a network. We're going to take a gateway and we're going to plug this in. Now again, we can plug this in using a standard RJ45 wall jack. We can use a PoE or we can use an 802.11. By the way, the two gateways, the 802.11, which connects over the Wi-Fi signal, and the Ethernet connected come with AC adapters. So not only do you need the connection, but you also need 110 power. From there, we're simply going to figure out the scope of our range, 200 foot point to point, and inside that 200 feet, we're going to locate up to 63 locks. Now, what if we have a facility that has multiple buildings along on our campus, such as a school or such as a college? We have the ability to manage over a wide area network as long as we have a network through those buildings, typically it's called a subnet, and we have a connection. Typically IT will set that up so that we can communicate through a router or a switch to the subnet. Same thing, we just simply locate gateways in each building, figure out what the range is, and make sure that we have enough coverage for each building, and we simply install locks. What this allows us to do is it allows us to manage a multi-story building or a multi-building uh, campus. So we've got a university or school district that has uh, uh, as many buildings as, as you have that you're able to locate gateways, install them, make sure that we have the same network, and we're able to wirelessly communicate to all of those locks from one central station. We don't have to go to the door. In this example here, we have a two-story building. We have auditorium, gymnasium, classrooms on level one, and we have the upper part of the auditorium and gymnasium and classrooms on, on the second floor. It's the same uh, thing. We're just simply going to take a gateway on the first floor. Gateway, we have the, the cloud. We're going to locate a gateway on the second floor. There's your cloud, that's your range, and we're going to install locks. The thing to keep in mind with the gateways is that they project a horizontal signal. So in multi-story buildings, you want to make sure that you have gateways on every single floor. You want to make sure that you locate the locks within that 200-foot um, radius. Uh, you can simply add more gateways, up to 50 of them on one account. Okay, so the basis of the system and what I want to review with you is the key components. Obviously, we need a laptop with our software. 4.1.88 or higher uh, loaded on it. And then secondly is we need a network. So for the demo purposes, what we've done is we've created our own demo kit. And on the black plexiglass here, we have a router connected to my laptop so that I can create a network. And then we have our Ethernet connected gateway, the IME, connected to the router. So now what happens is we have a local area network. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to communicate from here. You can think of it as a transmitter to these locks. And what happens here on these locks is we have a radio inside here. There's a 900 megahertz radio inside the lock followed by four C-cell batteries. And in this version here is the Prox version. What's really important when you install it is, is selecting the correct locations. First of all, you want to select a location for a gateway in some type of secured area, an office, closet, somewhere that is going to be near the ceiling and somewhere that someone's not going to be able to accidentally unplug it, either the data connection or the power connection. Then what we're going to do is we have a blue card. As you can see on the demo board here, there's a blue gateway card. That gateway card contains the MAC address. 
That's the identifying address of that particular gateway. What you'll notice when you get your cards is a place on there for you to put installed location. We're going to need to write down exactly where we installed it. Uh, first floor closet executive office. First floor closet in the network room. When you get to the locks and you install the locks, what you'll notice is that there is a yellow card. And what's really important is that when you install this lock is, again, you're going to write down the location of where you installed it. Front door, back door, side door, etc. Because when you get back to your computer, what you're going to end up having is you're going to have blue gateway cards and you're going to have yellow lock cards. When you set up your system, these cards are going to be very important to how you identify or what we call linking the locks to the software. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create an account using the network's lock. And just like what we've done previously, the database or the software gets set up the same thing. I've done part of that for us already because we've seen that in previous segments. So what we have with us today is we have two locks that we're going to set up. And from here, if you look at our software, you can see that I've got names in here. Uh, let's go ahead and identify user code. So it's the same process. Hold the shift key, scroll to the last name, press your left mouse key, let go of the shift, right click, generate selected new codes. Yes. Okay, so what we've done is we've set up our user codes. We've got four digit selected codes. Uh, let's take care of the administrative screen. So we're going to change our master code, 654321. Default is 123456. When I'm doing training classes, I just like to make it simple. We do the default backwards. And from here, I'm not using a, a laptop to go to the door. You'll notice there's not even any data jacks on the locks themselves. We're not using the DTM screen. So we're just simply going to hit accept from here. And you notice we have one lock. Again, my, the premise that I teach is let's create one lock, get all the data into the one lock, and then we'll clone it, which we're going to show you how to do that in this episode here. Once we get the database set up, let's go ahead and move these people into the locks. So we're going to highlight the first name, hold the shift key, go to the last name in the list, left click of the mouse, everything gets highlighted in between. We're going to right click, we're going to then add users to all locks. And I only have one lock here, so that's a simple choice. Okay, and if you'll notice, everybody is green. Once we do that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to bring the gateway config where we need to bring the gateway on board. In other words, we need over the network to go find the MAC address of the gateway so that we can bring it into our software, we can password protect it so that it's part of our system. So we're going to use this button up here called GW Config. Now you notice it says here, please set the security password by using tools. We have not done that yet, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to come up here to Tools, Set the Security Password. It's asking you for a six character code. So let's set that up. Okay, I'm done. Security code has been set. Have a nice day. And we mean that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take and go to the uh, gateway config from here. We've got my network adapter and this screen is going to load up here and there's two major buttons here that we're concerned with is discover new gateways, add to your account, and discover locks. The first thing that we have to do is we have to go out and find the gateways. Now that could be one gateway or up to 50 gateways. We're going to do it one at a time. And what actually happens is we send out a signal uh, over the network, over the LAN, to go find the MAC address of the gateway itself. So we're going to push the button. It's going to ask us, do you want to do this, yes or no? We do. And down here is what we want to look, down here at the bottom. It's going to tell you exactly what it's doing. It's searching for the gateway. It's asking you to please wait while it goes and looks for the MAC address. It's connecting. You can see the connection process. And what happens is when you look in the screen right here, it tells you the MAC address is just using the last two digits. is 2C77. And what would happen is that would actually match on your gateway card. And in here, what you would have is the installed location of where you installed it. Because what you want to be able to do is you want to identify where you installed it. Because you're never going to remember Gateway 1 and MAC address where it's installed. So all we're going to come over here in the description, we're going to double click, and we're going to have the chance to rename it. So we're just going to call this the uh, first floor conference room. That's it. When we do that, it's going to re-identify here. Now we know where that gateway is. 
Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to go out and have the gateway locate the two locks. Now we have the locks located, have one here on my bench on my table and I have another one over by Heather. So we're going to ask the gateway to go out and find two locks. We're going to hit the discover button. Gateway is going to go out and locate uh, the two locks. And what it's looking for is the serial number of the radio. And keep in mind what we use is a 900 megahertz radio. What you can see is it brought back two locks. It tells you a couple things. First of all, it tells you the serial number of each lock because what we're going to identify on this card is the serial number and where we install that. It's going to be important in a moment. And then secondly is it's going to give us the signal strength. Now this is really important when we set up a system because the kit that I'm using today, this demo kit, is actually the product that you would use to go out and do a custom survey so that you can get the range and you can do a proper custom on-site uh, survey, you know exactly how many gateways you need and for each one of the locks. So from here, we see that we've got good signal strength, 72 by 74 on this one, 68 by 68 on this one. We want that range to be above 30. So let's go ahead and choose these two locks. We're going to hit use selected locks. And what's going to happen is the gateway is going to then assign the serial number and it's going to marry it, as I call it, to the gateway itself. And once we get that assignment process, it's going to ask us, would you like to link the locks now? This is the important part. We're taking the serial number and we're going to link it to where we installed it because once we get into the software, we're not going to remember the serial number. We're going to remember front door, back door, side door, etc. So let's do that. We're going to simply hit yes. And here, what we're going to notice is that we have uh, one lock created in the system so far. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this lock here and we're going to link it here because we haven't set up the second lock yet and we're going to link it. Programming can be done now or later. Let's hit no because we're going to program later. And you will, you'll notice is you've got two locks assigned to the gateway. One is linked to a lock profile, the name. One is not. So let's go ahead and take care of that issue right now. Go back to global user screen. We're going to come up here to lock and we're going to clone it. And what it's going to ask you is what's the lock description? Where did we install this lock? We're going to say we installed it on the back door. It's a PDL 6100. Remember these part numbers come from the, um, from the label on the box. We're going to hit OK. And what you'll notice now all of a sudden I have a two lock system. So from here, what we need to do is we need to link that lock to the serial number. So we come up here, we're going to right click, we're going to link, unlink the serial number, and this tells us the back door, the currently the lock is unassigned, and the available serial number for us to use is this one right here. We're going to link it, close. We can program individually like we did using the data transfer module or the laptop on our standalone series, but here we're not taking anything to the door. So what we want to do is we're going to come up here to the wireless screen. This screen should look familiar because it's similar to the DTM screen. This is the screen that you have the ability, don't get dizzy when I do this, to be able to load 2,000 locks in it. We have two locks currently in it and they're currently linked. The wireless function means what do I want the software to perform at the door? What we want to do, and it's all a drop-down menu, is we're going to send the profile, that means what, what I've programmed so far in my database, to each lock. So let's choose that, send the profile. Now we need to select these, because the system needs to know when I hit this button here that I'm going to download these two selected locks. So we're going to choose that function now. What's nice about this screen is, first of all, it tells you through the pencil what we're doing. Secondly, is it tells you that the gateway is reachable. That immediately tells you that you got good communication. It's going to tell you exactly what it's doing. Files created communicating with lock. Once this gets completed, it's going to go to the second lock. Now, this means that if I had a system of 30, 40, 50, 60 locks spread across 10 gateways, you'll notice that I'm not programming via gateways, I'm programming via lock installation names. So the gateways are, are transparent. So what we want to be able to do is the communication is complete on lock number one, which is the front door. And we're now creating the information and sending the communication from the gateway to lock number two. 
Lock pro profile has been received. It's now updating the day, date, and time so that we have communication uh, from my computer. And it's really taking the day, date, and time from the PC it's connected to. Communication is now complete. So what we should have in this lock, if I go back to the global user screen, wrong screen, let's go to this one right here. What you'll notice here, let's choose my name. You notice that I'm green in both locks and that my code is 1754. So let's test that. One, seven, five, four. Green light, guess what? It works, okay? So let's try one more code. Scott Schramm's code, let's see if he's active. Yes, he's active in both locks. Let's try his code. Seven, zero, four, nine, green light, nine locks, okay? So now from here, what we've done is we've programmed the two lock system. From here, we can do a couple different things. If I want to come up to the lock itself, and I know that this lock here is 1B3, so let's look at it, view the status of the lock. What it's going to do is this screen here is going to show me the lock name, the model number. It's going to show me the serial number that matches what's on the card. It's going to tell me that it's connected to the first floor conference room gateway. It's going to give me the gateway IP address. And from here, it's going to give me the signal strength, 70 by 70. Now, 80 is probably at the top of the end. And we want at least 30 or above at the bottom of the end. It's also going to tell us the firmware version. What's very important about this system is that the locks themselves and the gateways use flash memory. Now, what that means is that as we come up with new features and enhancements, you're able to download those firmware upgrades right off of our website at alarmlock.com, drop them into your software, and you can actually flash the locks on the door. That means that your firmware never becomes obsolete. So any new features, new, any new enhancements, you'll get those, and those are free of charge. What it's also telling us is the battery status. What's really important about having a wireless lock is the ability to get PC uh, downloads and also PC reporting on the battery status before you actually ini uh, initiate a work order to change the batteries. It's telling it's currently locked and communication is good. So let's close this screen. Let's try something. Let's say, for example, Heather's at the front door and she calls me on the radio and says, hey, Bob, can you unlock the door for me? We can do that and come up here. She'd actually be at the back door. We come up here, right click on the door and look at this, put lock into passage mode. We're going to get a new status screen. And what we're going to do from here is it's going to tell you this is going to change on the lock state to in passage. And there it is right there. So now what happens is the lock is unlocked without me going to the door. It's in passage. Heather can call me back and say, okay, Bob, can you go ahead and relock the door? It's the same process. Highlight the door we're talking about. Take the lock out of passage. I'm going to get a, a new screen. It's going to show me what status the lock was in previously. It's already locked. It happens that quickly. And this will change from lock state to in passage. There we go. Now it's locked back up again. Now, as I mentioned in my intro, one of the things that this lock, uh, the system has is the ability to lock down what we call emergency global commands. And I have two commands that we can do. We can either lock down or we can unlock. And I can do that from the PC, which I'll show you now. And from the PC here, we just simply come up to the wireless commands on the toolbar. We do an emergency lockdown. We're going to get this um, red and yellow banner. And what's going to happen, and what you may not be able to see, is that the LED is actually going to blink red on both locks. This is going to give you a verification for the audit trail that it actually is an emergency lockdown. And there it is right there. It tells you all locks are secure on the screen. When I close this, and come back to the back door to run a status, you'll notice that the last time I did a status, it shows locked. What you're going to see this time is that's going to change to in emergency lockdown. And there it is right there. Okay, so we showed you that the back door was an emergency lockdown, but did the, lock, the front door also go into emergency lockdown? Let's find out. So we highlight the front door. We're going to uh, right click. We're going to view status. And what we're going to see here is we're going to get a brand new status and it should remain in emergency lockdown. And there it is right there. It's in emergency lockdown. Now, once I get the all clear, uh, the intruder alert is over with, uh, we have no issues uh, whatsoever, we can come back here to wireless commands. 
and we can do an emergency return to normal. What that basically means is that the locks are going to go back to the state that they were in previously. And it's a very simple process. What we're going to wait for is for a blue verification and it will tell you right, right here, and it will be on the audit trail as well, that the locks have been returned to normal. And there it is, locks returned to normal. So when we close the screen and we go back to the back door, for example, and we do another view status of lock, you'll notice that the last time we did a status, it was an emergency lockdown. That will now change, and it will go back to the previous state, which should just simply say locked. And there it is right there. So the locks are now fully functioning, and they're secure. And as I mentioned earlier, there are two ways that you're able to lock down the lock. We can do it by the PC, which is what we just simply did. But what if I'm not sitting at the PC and I'm um, on, the, on the ground in the, in the field at the facility? What I want to be able to do is I want to take this card. I'm going to attach it to me. We're going to come over here to the section that says Add Cards. I know that this is an APCO 36-bit card. Looking at the inkjet number on the card, I'm going to type in 544183. This is something we did in the earlier segment. And I know that the facility code is 19, build card data. Okay. Now all of a sudden what you get is a yellow highlight that says Bob has got no code number and he's simply a prox user. But we're not done there. We have to assign or allow Bob the ability to issue a global command. So we're going to highlight Bob in the global user screen. We're going to right click, very familiar screen. We're going to come down here, it says allow user to issue emergency commands. Emergency user added. Now we can add up to 50 people. So in other words, we can authorize up to 50 people that has the ability to do an emergency global uh, command. Now the thing is, how do we know that that actually uh, took place? Well, if we come back here to add administrative users, you'll notice that we have the ability to view the emergency users. And there it is right there. Bob Swope is an emergency user. What we want to do now is we're going to go back to the wireless screen and we're going to send that programming to both locks. That way it allows Bob the ability to walk up to the front door or the back door or any other lock that I have in the system to be able to walk up to it, present the credential that I use every single day to unlock the door. But in this case, uh, we have an intruder alert, we have an emergency, and I need to lock down my school, the hospital, my facility. Once we get that feature set up in, into the locks, I can simply walk up, present the card, and issue 911. Now, the other things that we can do with the, the system as it's going through the communication, we've already communicated to lock number one, it's already complete, is we can set up all of our time zones and our schedules just like we did in previous segments and it's done exactly the same way. The way the software is set up is the software today, which is on the website at alarmlock.com, is version 4.1.88. There'll be a new version of software probably in December at about the time that the net panel, the wireless keypad product comes out. And the thing to keep in mind is that the software is backward compatible. So each time I download the new version of software and upgrade Everything that I've previously done in all of my other locks will still be uh, in the software. It's just simply upgrading the software. Okay, we're now complete. So let's try the card. Okay, we get an entry. Everything is great, no problem. Now all of a sudden we have an intruder alert. And what happens here is um, Bob goes up to the front door or the back door and says there's a code, uh, uh, code red, code blue. Present the card followed by... 911. What's going to happen is you're going to hear a series of beeps and tones. This lock's going to lock itself down. The LED will actually start to flash red. The second lock in the system will start to flash red. And what will happen is all of those locks are now in emergency lockdown. So if I come up here, uh, and let's check both at once. We can do that actually. Instead of going door by door, we can come up to Gateway Config, come up to the Tools menu, view the gateways lock table and what you'll see right here above my mouse is it says lock status and it's going to show you in lockdown it's going to tell you the signal strength the battery is good the firmware version okay so now it's locked so let's double check that let's say for example Scott Schramm we verified his code earlier we know it works in the lock but let's check it now and see what happens seven zero 
four, nine. Well, I get a unique tone and the lock doesn't unlock. And here's the reason why. By default, every lock out of the box comes set to respond to emergency global commands. By default, every basic user is locked out. Now this is changeable or settable by the end user. You have to make a determination if you want the lock to respond to emergency global commands. You also have to make a decision if you want basic users. Now let's talk about basic users. In a school environment, basic users are more than likely the teachers. In a school lockdown, all the classrooms are locked down. Do we want the, the classrooms to lock down and lock out the teachers? Or do you simply want the locks to lock down and not lock out the teachers? You have the choice in how you want to set up the system. You can also have certain locks not respond to an emergency command. In other words, I, don't want, I want the classrooms to lock down, but I'm going to have certain doors and offices not respond so that the teachers' codes that they've been using will continue to work. Okay? So now let's reset that. I've showed you how to reset it from the software, but we also have the ability to reset it using my credential. And it's the same process. Remember, I'm using this credential to get in the door every single day. And by the way, I'm not locked out during a lockdown because I'm one of those 50 people. Secondly is when I want to reset the system, it's a very easy process. Present the card. One, two, three. It's a very simple code. Now what's going to happen is the lock is going to go back to normal. It's going to send a signal back to the gateway. The gateway is going to communicate to any other gateways attached on the network and also to any and all locks. So let's look at the gateway config screen and see what we find now. Tools, view gateways lock table, and there we go. The previous time we pulled up that screen, it said in lock or lockdown. Now it just simply says lock. Now there's a third function that we have uh, in the emergency global commands, and I like to call this the evacuation mode. This is a terrific idea if we're in a uh, elderly care, nursing care, where we want first responders, emergency responders, to be able to have access to the doors. The other thing is, is that let's think about in a corporate world where most buildings now have what's called a knox box on the front door. And that knox box contains typically a master key. So the first responder gets to the knox box, unlocks it, grabs the master key, and must go door by door by door. It's a manual process. So what we've done with networks is we have the ability to unlock every single door. It's just like the lockdown, but it's the opposite. So it's terrific for putting a card. Let's say you painted this red. You typed in here, present, press zero, zero, zero. The first lock they came to come to, which say the front door, would then send a signal to unlock every single other lock attached to it. Again, it would be great for that application, but it would also be great for the application of elderly care, patient care, nursing homes, where you want to be able to get the first responders into the door. Um, and it would be simply present. Zero, zero, zero. It's the same thing. Unlocks. This is unlocked. Heather would be so kind in the back of the room to check it for me. Boom, that door is unlocked too. So by taking the card and using this as an authorized user, one of 50 people would have the ability to lock down, unlock, and reset. And when you unlock it from one door, you can go to any other door in the system so that you can reset it from that door. So you can lock down from one, reset from another. A couple other things I want to make sure that we cover during this segment is, first of all, we talked about the fact that every lock comes out of the box preset to respond to emergency commands. Let me show you how to change that. On the feature screen in the software is where we would do that. And you'll notice right here, these two are checked automatically. Lock responds to emergency commands. Users are disabled during lockout. So I can choose, I don't want a lock to respond. To emergency commands or I want the lock to respond to emergency command but I don't want the teacher locked out. Users are no longer disabled. So that means that the teacher's card or code will allow them to get back in the classroom. You got to think very carefully about that and how you want a system set up. Do you want the teachers to be able to unlock the door knowing someone may be in the hallway or do you want to provide them with an evacuation route? The second thing that I want to show you here is on the gateway configure screen. Let's review the different options that you have. We've reviewed this already, which is the gateway's lock table. If we had 63 locks, we would be able to view in one screen all of the locks 
the locations, the serial numbers, the lock model, the firmware version. And this is where you would determine if you have upgraded firmware. In this case, 55G is the latest firmware for the Prox product. It's currently assigned, it's locked, and it gives you the signal strength. And here is where you would determine good or replace where you need to issue a work order for the batteries. The other thing that I want to show you here is under actions. Actions is where we have an issue with relocating a gateway. And here's what I mean by that. When we click off this gateway, we see that the color is blue. Blue is good. If I come up here and this is red, that means that the gateway went offline. All we're simply going to do is relocate gateways, and it tells you right here displayed in red. So that's a very simple process. Uh, the other things that you'll want to do under tools is if we want the global lockdown or global emergency commands to be able to be initiated from any lock within the system, we must set our gateways to static IP addresses. So let me back up. Out of the box, the gateways come set to DHCP. So basically the host is going to set the IP addresses. However, that means that the software must be up and running and that we're going to initiate the emergency global commands from the software. We want to be able to issue the emergency global commands from a lock, any lock within the system. In order to do that, we then need to set the gateways to static IP addresses. And this is where your IT folks will come and help you out. And it's simply configure network settings. And from here, you're going to change this from DHCP, you're going to change it to static, and then you're going to have the IP people, the IT people come in and, and enter the IP address, subnet, gateway, etc. By doing that, once you save and close, what happens is the software sends the IP address for every single gateway to each respective gateway. Therefore, what happens is the computer can be offline, the software doesn't have to be up and running because the gateways will send that emergency signal all across the network. I think that pretty much uh, gives you all of the different features and uh, programming capabilities of the network's locks. Again, remember that the capacity of the system is uh, 2,000 locks spread across 50 gateways. It's the same software that we use, although it upgraded, as we used for the previous product. So all of the previous segments that we've done today during the training session will apply with how to add users, remove users, how to do time zone schedules, uh, how to uh, import in the CSV file. Also keep in mind, because it's the same version of software, we can intermix both networks and standalone locks in the same exact system, meaning that if I come across an existing account that has Trilogy already in use, we can just simply upgrade the software, start installing wireless locks, gateways, and we're able to manage in the same database standalone and networks. We simply have a choice in programming. That choice is go to the door with the DTM, or simply sit on our desk and issue the programming from our PC. I hope this helps. I hope you learned a lot. We appreciate uh, you taking the time to uh, visit us on the web. Thank you.